Howdy folks, and welcome back to your home port. Got something new for you today. Well, not exactly new, more of an evolution and continuation. Panic and Sue Software has graciously allowed me to review their sequel to their popular game Crash Dive, which I originally did a few Let's Play videos for back in 2015, I think the first one was. I really like Crash Dive. And while it leans toward the arcade side of things, away from simulation side, it is promoted as tactical submarine combat. And, you know, tactical situations, I mean, that's going to be heavy on the action. And uh, really quite nice graphics in this game, though, especially when it was, you know, coming from a mobile platform then. Uh, now, uh, you can get Crash Dive on Steam, iOS, Android, what have you. Uh, it looks good on whatever platform. Crash Dive 2, due to be released on Steam April 1st, 2021. It's coming right up. And it's currently going through its last minute tweaks and fixes that the dedicated beta testers are working with. iOS and Android versions will follow shortly if they aren't out of the App Store review process by that time. Now I call this an evolution. If you've played Crash Dive, then the same game mechanics will seem familiar to you when you play Crash Dive 2. But there is new gameplay in here that you just couldn't do in Crash Dive. One is the anti-aircraft gun. It's nice to have a defensive weapon available if you get caught on the surface, and it's just good tactical fun as well. Tutorial warns you not to shoot down a plane who'll end up crashing on your sub. Not that we'd do that on purpose anyway, but I think you gotta watch your trajectories. <laughs> you know, good advice, I, I'm sure. Absolutely, can only imagine how much damage crashing airplane do to your sub. Another great tool for American subs, radar. Now, I think I didn't think I mentioned that. This is based on the silent service, the American submarine forces in the Pacific during World War II. So as I say, another great tool for American subs is radar. With this, you can track ships from quite a distance, allowing you to get into the perfect attack position. Unfortunately, it seems that the Japanese Navy is not equipped to detect your radar signals. That would normally, you know, that'd be giving you away your position. They'd know you were coming. Another nice addition that brings a fuller sense of immersion is the new crew management system. Crew skills directly affect the capabilities and efficiency of each compartment of the submarine. When the ship takes damage during combat, your crew members, they can be knocked unconscious, injured, or outright killed. Any incapacitations will affect the efficiency of the compartment, causing it to take longer to make repairs or stop flooding. You can move your incapacitated crew members to the crew quarters and bring a healthy, or at least more healthy, crew member than the one you're replacing to help bring up the compartment efficiency. The longer a crew member is assigned to a compartment, their skills in that department will increase. Another clever thing you can do is cross-train your crew for different compartments. Do this when you're on a long voyage between combat actions to allow them to get some time in. It's always nice to replace an incapacitated crew member with someone who might at least have some skills in that compartment. The game will generate side missions for you too during war patrols or campaigns, giving you further opportunities for adventure and glory. These missions do not seem to expire, so you can work them into your patrol as you can if you want to. One such mission type looks like enemy port infiltration, so that should be fun. A lot of ports have defensive minefields in place, which can be navigated with the help of your magnetic substance detection equipment. Mines are placed in a three-dimensional matrix with mines at different depths as well as random distances between mines, making navigation possible but definitely challenging. All these new features of the game definitely add to its immersion factor. Time slips away while playing for sure. I find it very easy to get sucked into this. I would love to see these new features retrofitted to the original Crash Dive, but as I understand and from the devs, this would be a major undertaking. One can always hope though. Crash Dive 2 has thorough tutorials that I highly recommend you check out before setting out on your first mission. They don't take too long to go through and will definitely leave you in a better position to be successful. Once you've played a bit and get some basic tactics under your belt, you can comfortably move up the difficulty levels. Let's take a look at a convoy battle I was engaged in while on a war patrol on the easy setting so you can get an idea of what that's like can't believe we've got another another Yamato class battleship in our sights. This is the second one on this particular patrol. Also a light cruiser, but I have got two torpedoes in the bow tubes and I can't remember how many I've got in the aft tubes, but I'm thinking I think I've got four back there. Six torps. The last one took four or five torpedoes to put down We've also got a sub chaser to the north and the aforementioned light cruiser. I don't know. If I get the battleship, that will be fine. I will uh, 
duck down, turn tail, and uh, call it a day, I think. This is a nice thing. I couldn't have better luck. It probably has something to do with being on easy <laughs> for the first uh, War Patrol. What the hell, right? Try it out just to kind of get the game mechanics under our belts, but so far we've been doing pretty good. All right. Let's go back down. We don't need to leave it lingering up there for someone to see. All right. We're currently at 60 feet. That is apparently the maximum depth for the American submarines and their periscope, so we'll take it. All right, let's put the scope back up. Need to have another look here. He's getting closer all the time. He's, well, he's under 1,000 yards, so for me, by the time he gets... It's not a bad firing range. He's coming on dead ahead here, so... Yeah, duck her down again. Just make sure everything matches up with the plotting table. Do, 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 come on. Now, how close is he going to be? Yeah, he'll still be fine. Far enough away. You want, you want to make sure your torps activate because they got enough distance. That's where we're way past that thing. Okay. Line it up on there. Nice looking ship. Too bad you have to go to the bottom. Let her fly. Okay, so that is my last two from the bow tubes. Nope, oh, pushed the wrong button there. Okay, we're going to crank up our speed and spin this boat around. Get spun around quicker. He's going to see, yeah, he's seen the torps. He's got hits. He'll start taking evasive action. That cruiser will be doing the same very shortly. Get this boat spun around here. I'm not sure if it's turns any faster when you've got the props on or not. Certainly putting a little more distance between us and the and the Ayabi. Ayabi. And now, bring those rear tubes to bear. Let us have a look. Scope up. Four, four, four torps available. No reloads. That's that zero next to the torpedo. Yeah, I see. That's the bow tube. Aft tube. There are. N that is our fire button. Though no, that's the thing. Okay, there's one for you, buddy. Six hundred something yards. You're certainly not going to get away. And of course he is. He's turning into us. So we'll take a look at this guy. But you know what? I'd rather dump that last torp into the battleship because, honestly, do not know. Who knows? Maybe get a dud or something. I'm gonna save it. Make sure he's. Yeah, screw it. Boy, he's listing pretty good, too. We are dropping down. We are getting the heck out of here. Down to 100 feet. This thing sinks like a stone, really. <laughs> yeah, well, let's haul butt. We get down to that uh, thermal layer. You'll see the blue under our depth on the left side of the screen there as it cranks up. The blue will slowly start to come up there like it is now. We're going through and into the thermal layer, and we are now under the thermal layer, so it'll be very hard for them. Not very, but much harder for them to detect us with sonar because the sound waves do tend to bounce off of a thermal layer where there's a change in thermal temperature. And I'm thinking probably when it cools because the water might be denser, harder for the sound to get through it. That is my layman's science on it right there. I don't know the actual reason, but sounds plausible. All right, buddy's going down. It's a glorious sight. I'd never heard of this uh, Yamato-class ship. I'm thinking that uh, it was probably never built, but maybe was planned or something like that at some point had the war gone on long enough. Or maybe, maybe the dev has taken the uh, artistic license. Probably not. This probably was a planned ship in the history of the line. Alright. Subchaser's busy dropping ash cans on us. Evidently the light cruiser does not do that sort of thing. He's running away. He's headed pretty much due west. This guy doesn't know where to go. We're down to our to three knots, trying to keep quiet anyway, not pushing our luck, even though we are under the thermal layer. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Guy is dropping. Stuff, but we are a very healthy distance away from him. Not to worry. 
Not to mention our depth of 300 feet. Ooh, <laughs> crank her up. Yeah, I think they're uh, I think they're done looking for us. Crank up the time compression just so we can get through some of that. They weren't going to get us anyway. Yeah, they are gone. And I think we got no torpedoes left. And I know there is a side mission to uh, attack a crippled... Um, there's a light cruiser right where that pin is on San Cristobal. Uh, but we have no torps. I really don't want to be lingering around without torps. I think uh, it might be time to uh, surface the boat and head back to base, wherever that is. This is just a war patrol, so it didn't show where we came from. It just plops you down in your uh, patrol area. And they give you a very large patrol area. And uh, go wherever you like, they tell you at the beginning. So, yeah. We've got 85% left on our batteries. and lots. 100% crew health. No flooding. It's like 97% oxygen. And we still have 90. 98% of our fuel. Yep, they are sailing away. Off you go. Looks like they're headed back in the original direction they were going. Still have a mission to do. Yeah, I think... Pull down that scope. Yeah. I don't think... Well, are they quite far enough away? Yeah, pretty much. 32... Yeah, well, 32 time compression. We'll get away from them a lot quicker turning this way. There we go. Radar is up. Since we're on 32 times, it looks like something's spinning very... There we go. There's your radar. Doesn't look like anybody around within visuals. Nope. The deck gun moves where you move. So when you're looking at something, the deck gun points there automatically. Kind of neat. We'll be doing further videos on all these different features. I just wanted to give you guys a little taste of what the... Of what the some of the activity looks like, feels like, sounds like. Looking forward to uh, busting into people's ports, navigating minefields, shooting down aircraft, and sinking a lot more ships. Pretty nice graphics. Good sound effects, too. They've, uh, they've done a really nice job with sound effects. Yeah, it looks pretty darn good. I think, yeah, I think that's going to be about it. Um, like I say, no torps. Let's, uh, let's kick out. Let's just check our stats a little bit here let's see so wow check the bottom of that total points we sunk 204,000 tons of shipping so that's on easy so you know I've played a lot of sub simulators and things so I think I'll crank her up to medium next time and see how that goes not knowing if it's like crash dive I can probably play on the sim level and do all right it just, uh, everything is not nearly as easy, right? Yeah, 204,000. So that last one that we sank right there at the bottom, Ayabi? Ayabi. Not sure how to pronounce that. Yamato class battleship. We also sank the Musashi earlier. A boatload of, uh, obviously, Maroos here. Cargo ships and such. And then earlier in the patrol, we also sunk. Yeah, there's Musashi right at the top there. Aircraft carrier Akagi. 38,000 tons. Yeah, a very successful patrol. <laughs> Possibly not as realistic as it should be. All right, folks. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, like I say, we're going to be doing a bunch more videos on this. This is a, this is what I say is an evolution and a continuation and an improvement in a lot of ways over the original Crash Dive. And as I said, I'd like to see these, these new features here retrofitted to Crash Dive, but uh, I don't know if that's possible. Uh, I understand it'd be quite an undertaking, but, well, you never know. One can help. All right, folks, thanks very much for stopping by and watching, and uh, make sure you check this out on April 1st. Pick it up from the Steam store, and I th hopefully from your app stores for your mobile devices as well. All right, folks, thanks very much. Ciao for now.